Docker. Now, Docker is one of those buzzwords you hear a lot about these days. And today we're gonna look at what Docker and containers are and what problem they're trying to solve. So starting off, going back to the 19 God knows what, businesses ran on applications. They still do, but they did then as well. And at the time, one application ran on one server. So if a business wanted to run a new application for a new product launch, for example, they'd need to buy a new server. Now that came with all the costs you'd expect. So you have the cost of the servers themselves, obviously, but then you also had to have the physical space for the hardware. You need to maintain them. You'd have software support, cool the servers, all that kind of thing. So essentially new product launches and new innovation was really expensive. And on top of all of this, companies didn't know how big or how fast they needed their servers to be. So to err on the side of caution, companies would go for the biggest, fastest servers they could possibly need, which meant a lot of wasted hardware potential. Now to solve this problem came our knight in shining armor, not Docker just yet. VMware. Now VMware was such a revolutionary idea that even today it's worth over 40 billion dollars. Now this was a basic concept. Since only one application could run on one server, VMware would make one machine think it was several machines. So you could run several virtual machines on one server and run several applications on that server. But while this was much better than what they already had, it still had its own host of problems. Every virtual machine would need its own operating system, so that meant manually updating every operating system when security patches rolled out. It meant paying for every single operating system for every single virtual machine. And it meant each operating system was using its own resources to run. So that meant its own processing power and storage. Now this is where containers and Docker came in. Now here's the concept with a container. So just like virtual machines were virtualizing the hardware, containers were virtualizing the operating system itself. So instead of replicating the operating system on every single virtual machine, a container could run on top of the machine it was running on. Now containers have a lot of benefits. And the biggest is that without having all of those replicas of the operating systems, you don't have any of the baggage that comes with it. So you're not using all of the resources those OSs were using to run. You're not having to maintain and update each of those resources. But on top of all of that, containers are also small in size, so they're not using a lot of resources to run. Right, great, that's containers. But where does Docker fit into this? Now, the company Docker Inc. and the technology Docker are two separate things. Now, the company Docker is the main sponsor behind the open source containerization technology called Docker. Now, the technology Docker is basically an operating system for your containers. So using it, you can use the command line to start, stop, and manage your containers. And to go over a few more technical jargon words you might hear, the Docker image is a blueprint for creating an instance of a container. If you're familiar with object-orientated programming, it's like a class that you can use to create instances of objects. And if you hear the word registry being used in association with Docker, a registry is a place on the cloud where Docker images are stored. And you can use those Docker images to create instances of Docker containers. Now the most popular registry is Docker Hub, but there are others that exist. And you can even have your own private Docker registry if you need a lot of security. And one other thing is Kubernetes. Now the Kubernetes platform was Google's answer to how to manage a large number of containers. While Docker provides the mechanics for starting and stopping containers, Kubernetes lets you manage a much higher number of containers. So in Google's case, every single Google search runs in its own Docker container. And just using Docker to manage millions of containers every minute would be a nightmare. So Google created Kubernetes. So Kubernetes manages how many containers are running, which nodes they're running on, when they're being started and stopped and scheduled, and all of that kind of higher level management of containers. So you can think of Kubernetes like the conductor of a grand orchestra. That's all for now, but moving forwards, we will look at how to actually use Docker.